Paul, Dr. Nacho, hanging on a Sunday with my two amigos, the pair of amigos, Dimitri and Fadi, talking about what you love, soft tissue grafting. I talk about business, no one cares. How to talk to patients, no one cares. Soft tissue grafting, that is what you want to hear. So we brought them to you here. If you're watching in and you text Perio to 215-543-645 or you'll get a free CE on TV show from these two amazing periodontists and an invite to the soft tissue grafting course we are hosting in Philadelphia in July. I will be there off contributing zero value except jokes, but these two will be here teaching you hands-on soft tissue grafting. Today, we're going to go over a case, but welcome Fadi and Dimitri. Share with me before we get started, what is going to happen at this hands-on course? Dimitri, I see pictures of you all over doing your hands-on stuff. Tell us what happens at a two-day hands-on soft tissue grafting course. Well, um, basically, in a nutshell, we're, we're uh, putting together both of our knowledge of soft tissue grafting, which is majority of our practice is soft tissue grafting, me, uh, myself and Fadi, and it's our, one of our passions um, that we share. And uh, the course that I've been giving, soft tissue course, um, I think it's been, um, you know, pretty comprehensive, but by adding Fadi into the whole mix, it's going to be making even more comprehensive because I, he does certain things that I don't do. So we want to put together um, not just the hands-on, but also the didactic portion that's going to be very much expanded into, um, it's, it's going to be full two days, uh, probably could be three days, but we're trying to create a course that's going to be uh, a full, full of soft tissue um, procedures that uh, general dentists as well as specialists can take. Um, and get to practice that on the real pig jaws, um, maybe some models and, and things like that from suturing to bed preparation to placement of the graft, harvesting of the graft and everything that goes into it. And that's, that, that's applicable to teeth and implants. Awesome. Um, I also so want to share, I don't know if people know this about me, but I still am a dentist that goes into my office. I'm going tomorrow. So even though I have zero desire to ever take out proline and do soft tissue grafting, <laughs> I'm glad to be there so I can diagnose more, diagnose more, do some, diagnose more, do some. I'm very passionate about this with placing dental implants, diagnose more implants, do some. So it just makes you a better practitioner, makes your patients happier. So Fadi, you're going to be here in Philadelphia with Dimitri. Uh, the dates, tell us the dates. I'm going to drop in the chat where you tell us the dates. You can sign up and you can use the code nachos to save $200. Um, it is July 20. 3rd through 25th, correct? Yes. So we're going to be there the 23rd, kind of help setting things up uh, for the course. Um, and I think we had discussed might be doing like a small, uh, like a happy hour just to meet everyone who, who arrives on uh, Friday night. And um, then we'll start, you know, Saturday and Sunday. And like Dimitri said, it's going to be a, it's going to be a really amazing mixture between what I do differently in my practice than what he does. So he does amazing courses. I know in West Coast, um, and from my perspective, kind of just adding them together, I think our participants are going to get some really unique like, soft tissue experience. And like you said, diagnosing better, and treating better as well. So we're going to put our heart and soul for all Truly awesome. I'm going to manage here. We have some, uh, some great people watching here on Zoom, so you guys can ask questions. I'm going to drop back and turn it over to you. What I don't know if you noticed when you signed the agreement with Nachos, um, I'm not charging you to market the course, but Dimitri said he would buy me unlimited Cadillac margaritas at Alves because I don't have to do anything the next day. So however I feel is fine. I'll just be 100%. The back. That's yeah, absolutely. We're getting a couple of pictures just for yeah. you. It comes in awesome. the pictures, by the way. I never seen a yes. Cadillac margarita in the picture other than at Alves. Yeah, uh, we're yeah. going to uh, do that. All right. Also, I'm going to drop back, guys. I'll check in on you guys. I'll, I'll um, monitor the questions. And thanks for sharing with the group here. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, another thing that we didn't quite uh, mention with Fadi is is basically if you are a resident or um, a current resident in a residency, please let us know. We, we would like to help you um, with the special pricing. You know, we know we've been residents ourselves, so it's not always easy to, um, you know, to finance the CE courses during. So we'd love to help you in, in any way. Just uh, send us a direct message. Uh, we'll give you a special code if you're a resident. Yep. So I do have that set up. So again, like Dimitri said, um, please DM us directly on our Instagram. So we'll give you our Instagram as well account for our period.amigos and also our personal ones. Um, so that way we can help you guys. I, I know a lot of residents have reached out to me and we created something specifically for them to help them out as much as possible. Yeah, for sure. All right, do you want to start with your case? Um, share us and I'll, I'll share with mine and I'll give the also the code for the end of the day as well. Oh, let's actually start with yours. So, yeah. 
All righty. So do you, do you still have a, sorry, Fadi, do you still have the, I was going to share the same case that you've shared uh, that me and I, uh, that we talked about just recently on IG life, uh, you know, that same, same uh, case, the A through Z kind of a number nine or a number eight I don't with the soft I, tissue. I don't think I have it anymore. Okay. No worries. I don't think I have it anymore because I know I edited it, but I don't think I have it anymore. So. Not a problem. I, I got it. Uh, I got it. Okay. We can, we can go. Alrighty, well, let me share with you this case, which I found to be really amazing. This is one of the cases that we discussed at our IG Live as well, but um, I thought it was really worth kind of sharing. Oh, yeah. Just kind of give you guys an idea of you know, what we see in our day-to-day -day perio practice, how we think as from a perio perspective and how the importance of soft tissue really comes to us and you know breaking it down. So this is a great case where we, you know, it was during orthodontic therapy and my orthodontist who I've been working really with for the past few years sends the patient back to me. And after she's been cleared with perio, you know, and we address all the issues, six, seven months down the road in ortho, he tells me there's something going on with, you know, with, with one of her front teeth. So, um, again, I had a chance to see her and, you know, we're probing. I see some, you know, definitely loss of attachment, um, a lot of craniac tissue loss some plaque buildup. So we go through again, another round of scaling, get things a little bit healthier for her, but things don't resolve really well. Radiographically, what's interesting about this case guys is that everything looked really good. Just slight widening of the PDL. That's all it is. Nothing can be seen radiographically. So our goal was like, you know, I'm just going to do a free gingival graft, um, you know, just kind of improve the quality of the tissue, maybe get some root coverage out of it. You know, a lot of times we can see that so I start my preparation of the bed anytime we do a fridge and graft. And, you know, when I reflect it and clean things out, it looks something like this. Oh, wow. So it kind of throws you off. And I was like, oh my God, there is like so much bone loss on that one tooth. I can see the roots on the adjacent teeth, both the mesial surfaces. And there's almost bone loss down, almost down to the apex of this tooth. So I'm thinking about this as like, well, I mean, how am I going to treat this? Like my goal was to do a free gingival graft. You know, am I, do I add bone? Do I not add bone? There's pretty much bone loss almost to the lingual plate. Like my probe can actually perf the lingual soft tissue. There's barely any bone there. Wow. I was thinking like, okay, this is just too diseased at this point in time to think about adding bone. Because if I do, there's a chance I might just get a bony infection. I might lose it all and cause more compromise. So... Is like, that tooth vital at this point, buddy? Tooth is vital. What's amazing that that that's that incredible. It is incredible to see how sometimes our body can be resilient um, and kind of letting things fail. You know, it just does it slowly at a time. So after debridement, it looks something like this. You know, so and it was like, all right, I cleaned it really well. So I add some biologics, you know, I love, I use a lot of endogen in my private practice. So I added, you know, Prev gel, which removes the smear layer. Then I did MD again after that. Um, and then just let it kind of sit for a couple of minutes. And then I just decided to proceed with what I originally was planning for, which was a free gingival graft. So the reason I decided to go with that option, because thinking as far as like moving forward for this, for this case and for this tooth is that there is no tissue to start with. So I need to, either way, I need to create some more soft tissue. If I am able to do that, then I can come back again and then I can use that whatever tissue I create to maybe, you know, at least come back for root coverage or even use it for any kind of bone grafting procedure later on. At least there's something for me to close the wound back with versus- Right, you need keratinized tissue to get, get some good coverage at a later time, whatever we're going to plan. Exactly. So the key thing is that you have to think kind of biologic. You know, what we need to establish some form of normality first in the area before we can even consider adding more to it. So I go with my fridge and graft. Six months post FGG, this is what it looks like. So I'm seeing, okay, it doesn't look as inflamed as before, but there's still some plaque buildup. There's still minor gum and soft tissue or gum inflammation at the margin. Um, again, still there's recession. I wasn't planning on you know getting anything, which as expected, this is what we got. So I was like, all right, um, it looks much better now, but let's see what looks when we reflect the gum again. So now I'm aiming for root coverage and see what's underneath it. So reflecting it, this is wow. like, okay, it's amazing. I have actually a lot of bone regeneration on the mesial surfaces of the adjacent teeth. There 
this. That's incredible, dude. I mean, it's like that is incredible. A little bit of you know of, a, of some bony defect, but compared to what I had before, it's like this, this looks incredible. So here, was your like your incision design wise? Uh, were you planning to do a free gingival graft? So this is a split thickness flap that you've created, or what's what exactly are we planning here at this step? So my goal was like I'm going to do a lateral sliding pedicle. Let me just aim for uh, there's some kind of tissue on the side. Let me see if I can just do a lateral sliding pedicle and just move that tissue and move that. You're trying to move tissue from the distal aspect into that in, over and you deepithelialize this portion on the right side of the picture to slide it into. Exactly. So it's exactly so we deepithelize our papillas and you know we create a full thickness and followed by partial thickness beyond the mucogingival junction. And our goal was to, well, let's see if we can, you know, it's like I wasn't too comfortable doing a second traditional graph because I really didn't know what the bone was going to look like underneath it. But luckily for us, there was some bone. So that was a good thing, you know. That's amazing. There's still a bony defect. So now I'm thinking, it's like, well, I still need to add bone, but let me add bone first. So I, what I did was I did end the game, same protocol. And then after that, I added a an, you know freeze dry bone allograft for like a standard GTR case. So okay, before you go on, um, I don't know somebody, uh, some of the doctors that are watching, can you just uh, explain what MD gain is and what MD gain is designed for? I know some doctors know it and some doctors may not. So if you can just briefly explain what MD gain is used for. Absolutely. So MD gain, if you guys don't know it, it's an enamel matrix derivative. It's a, you know, Strom is one of the companies that sell it actually. And it's made from porcine tooth buds. It's a biological kind of modifier. In other words, it, it allows for cementogenesis um, in the on, on natural tooth structure. So which means allows new cement formation, also new regeneration, which includes bone, cementum, and PDL. So it does help in that process. It aids in also in, in angiogenesis of the site. So if it's been used a lot for cases with bony defects, guided tissue regeneration. It's also been used for soft tissue recession. So it has a lot of growth factor potential into it and that allows for new generation to happen. So that's the, the beauty about using biologics in sometimes those you know, advanced defects that we see. Whether it's a bony defect, it's a soft tissue defect, meaning recession and so on, but it does definitely aid in wound healing process. It's interestingly that originally it's des it was designed to use without any bone grafting material is solely just play, you know, their recommendation is just, you know, clean the roots, place them again only and close it. All right. Uh, but you, you obviously sometimes can use it with the bone graft material. Yeah, so that's the beauty about it, is that you can use it with bone graft material. I know a lot of the research. I'm there to answer questions. Some nice dentists here. Hope you'll join us in Philadelphia in July. What was the name of the product? Maybe you guys answered. I just wanted to ask that lot. What was the name of the product? Oh, it's, it's talking Emigain. about M the Gain. M the Gain from Strawman. Uh, Strawman companies, like Potty mentioned, it's the only company that produces it. It's a biologic uh, made out of tooth buds from very, very unborn pigs. Um, <laughs> as gruesome as it may sound, that's what they they. They grow these pigs specifically for tooth buds. They take out that specific protein that's found in the tooth bud of a pig. And that's what we use to grow uh, PDL, cementum, and bone. So I put the, you can see the name is at the upper left corner. So, so I can attach it to the picture in case you guys want to see the name of it. And if you want to write it down. Yeah. Thanks, Fadi, for explaining that. That's really cool. All right. <clears throat> so then we use our standard bone graft, which is MDBA, which is freeze-dry bone allograft that we use for socket preservation, for root augmentations, for GTR. It's the same bone graft that we like to use. Um, and then I follow with a connective tissue graft because I really want to cut membrane. But again, my goal was to get some root coverage if possible because I started with a lot of recession. So I'm trying to really help improve the quality off of the tissue in that in that site, so that way it doesn't continue to progress, and we don't see any further recession happening. So we get there, you know, seven O sutures, which is you know vicral. That's what I love to use for those sites. They're small, they're nice, they're, the knots are small, so it doesn't really kind of affect, affect the tissue attachment on my graft. So that's my purpose of using was them. This, uh, was this sub epithelial harvest or deepithelialized FGG? What did you use here? This is a deepthelized free gingival graft. And you can see how nice and more on the wider side it is. There's not much yellow. Um, with yep. the graft has a more fatty tissue to it. This one's more 
kind of leaner, in other words, kind of lean? lean, lean. Yeah, it is. Leaner and, and uh, fatty, less less fat for sure. So, you know, we didn't really mention there's multiple ways to harvest uh, autogenous tissue, which we'll uh, go over in a lot of details in our course, obviously. But this is one way to take connective tissue without, you know, with high quality uh, by you taking a free gingival graft and converting it into uh, connective tissue. Yeah, so it's incredible. It's pretty much my go-to in the last almost a year, year and a half for my all my soft tissue cases and the results yeah. have very remarkable. So yes. I'm going to show you two different ways of harvesting. So, you know, definitely that's something for you guys worth to kind of understand what the pros and cons for each one as well. Mm -hmm. All right. So then we go in for wound closure. So again, I'm just kind of sliding it over. You know, these are six own nylon sutures, a couple of chroma gut. Well, you see the purple on the side. This is periacryl, which is a kind of a super glue for gums. In other words, it's a yeah. soft adhesive. Um, the reason I placed it there is because I really didn't want any, any kind of fluids or saliva or bacteria kind of getting underneath um, my flap and just kind of aid in wound closure in other words. So uh, it doesn't look pretty, but it does a really good job for wound closure, especially following soft tissue grafting cases. And it goes away within a few days. So it doesn't stay too, too long. That's the nice thing about it. Um, now, what amazing is this is six months post the surgery. So I got root coverage compared to what I first started and not only that, but I also have bone regeneration. So now my patient probes two to three millimeters, which is incredible compared to what I started was almost 10 to 12 maybe millimeters with a circumferential defect around an entire tooth. So definitely this case is one for the books for me to remember and go by because it's one of the things that I need to think outside the wow. box, in other words, you know, and like I mentioned to you, like in our live IG, like, her, her brother is a dentist who recommended an all on four for her maxilla, for her mandible, just because of this one tooth, which kind of... That's uh, <laughs> wild. It's like a shot. So, you know, I like the fact that she had a lot of faith in trust. I love implants, and that's even much for me, Fadi, so I agree with you. That, that's a little aggressive. It's a lot aggressive, but, you know, for this case, now she's back in... She just finished her ortho um, at this point, and... Uh, you know, and uh, we might come back. Hopefully, she lets me. I um, might do another kind of small, kind of just coronal advancement if she allows me. She's been through a lot of procedures with me. So, but as far as now, I'm content. She's content. We're happy. It's all about maintenance, uh, you know, moving forward. You know, these ortho cases, I see so much, so many of these lower anterior single tooth uh, recession. It's always, always associated with ortho um, or post ortho. So, um, you know these kind of cases i have no idea how the orthodontist or the uh, the wire or the invisalign even uh, move that root so just one single root so uh out of, outside of the alveolar housing sometimes and i, I wish like this case obviously still has bands and, and brackets on you could you could probably push the root in a little bit more if need to but you know i see this so many times and uh, you know they don't want to go back to ortho again because they've been in braces for so long and we have to sort of uh, plasty the roots and stuff like that. Do you do you routinely recontour these roots to get better root coverage? Uh, how do you feel about this? I do that a lot, especially especially when it comes to canines. These are the most prominent teeth that are. I mean, we see a lot of like they're kind of bulging out. So when there's a, too much prominence and it's been, you know, kind of tilted more towards the buckle, you have to be a little bit more aggressive when it comes to that root cleaning and get the get it as almost as flat as possible. Mm -hmm also trained to sometimes use a burr and yeah. line with that but i didn't notice a lot of sensitivity my patients were complaining even yeah. even if i got a 100 percent coverage there's too much root sensitivity that my patients yeah. were i'm with you yeah i'm with you so i just stopped doing that and just been more hand scaling or a back hand scaling. That yeah 100 percent. i do the same thing i stop uh root a root preparation using a uh, handpiece, I, I tend to just scale more, you know, take a, um, a very nice sharp scaler and just make make it flat by a, a lot less sensitivity for sure. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm less aggressive than I used to be in terms of bringing that root, you know, like if you if you root, read Zucchelli or even a Homozade in his uh, Vista uh, preparation, he they really make these roots so flat that it's almost crazy. But uh, yeah, you have to do it sometimes in these cases. So that was a great a result. Great result. Also, you can see the increased attachment of the tissue. So, um, you know, 
maybe come back and do like a little phrenectomy if, if, if that's desired with like a laser here. What do you think about that? Or even a simple phrenectomy? I mean, a simple phrenectomy, a small FGG again would be great. At this point, I think anything you can throw in, it's going to be successful. And here's why. Because you have bone. Bone is there. Yeah. We were able to regenerate it. So the fact you can get root coverage is much more predictable now than before. You know, and as far as the freedom, that can be easily removed, whether you go for root coverage or an FGG. So either way, you'll be able to get much better results now just because simply you have bone. Absolutely. And how old was this patient again? I would say she was in her mid 40s, I would say. So gotcha. yeah, mid 40s, I would say. Oh, you, you gave the site a fair chance and, you know, um, as far as like implant site development for this site, it would be very challenging if we were to go, go straight to the implant, like doing this vertical augmentation with um, tiny little, you know, space is, is not always easy. So saving this tooth was a good call here, I think. I mean, and if it fails in the future, at least I know there's better bone, there's better soft tissue. So all yeah. in for future purposes, you you have a better foundation to work with. For sure, hundred percent. No, Greg, the great case. Uh, it's it's definitely something you you can consider for like a case report and publish it, or, you know, if it ever, because that's that's pretty amazing. Strawman should definitely endorse you uh, your case for M the gain here that pull the pull the weight. <laughs> They definitely should hope they're listening and watching. <laughs> yeah. No, that's amazing. Great case, dude. Awesome, man. Yeah, that's the uh, power of perio, you know, when you can combine the, the true regeneration and then soft tissue magic on top of that. Same goes for implants, you know. Um, and I'm going to share my case now. And, you know, same goes staging things as well as, um, you know, working on the bone as well as soft tissue. It's all very important around implants, which I think we're going to hit a lot in our course. So let me share my screen. Um, all right, can you see that that case? Yes, I can. Okay, so let's see. Let's see if we can keep moving forward. So this is this is a case. She's uh, is a female patient of mine. She's um, basically the way we ended up here is after a root canal. Um, gone wrong or root canal apical gone wrong as you could see the endodontist uh, attempted the, the apicoectomy and then that led into this massive recession she actually lived this way for over 10 years and she's uh she's an artist uh lives in santa monica pretty low smile line and very very low demand kind of uh, you know for aesthetics but she's uh, she's a beautiful woman and and she definitely wanted to you know get things healthy the the good thing is that there was no probings around it other than just that apical portion but no inflammation no you know bleeding on probing no peri uh, purulence no pus or anything like that and the tooth was surprisingly not mobile um, so that's why she <laughs> right no mobility at all. Um, so she lived like this for, like I said, 10 years. And uh, the, the general dentist who's been her, general dentist has been encouraging her. She considered a bridge option versus an implant. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously these kind of cases where you're lacking bone and soft tissue, they're very challenging for either of the uh, options. So bridge would be very challenging to get a nice aesthetic result. Um, and also the uh, implant would be even more challenging, I think, to get the good aesthetic results. So we settled on implant uh, for this case. So these kind of cases I generally like to stage, just like what you covered in a previous case, we wanna, uh, we need soft tissue. We, we know that to be able to grow good bone and regeneration, we need soft tissue coverage or closure over the, the side of a bone graft. And obviously, um, let's move forward. Uh, this is a you know um, the day of the extraction as you can see it's probing right into that palatal bone area uh, so first step for me for these cases is just extraction there's no bone grafting involved at the time of extraction just remove the tooth degranulate the uh, area of a periapical lesion and let the body do its job so this this is two months forward as you can see, we got beautiful regeneration of soft tissue. We have obviously a defect, soft tissue, and a bony defect. Um, and generally, the, the longer you wait, the thicker, the better quality the tissue will get there. So the reason why we wait two months is because if you cut into that tissue too soon, sometimes it's not as vascularized. So that tissue is too thin, and you can, you can risk a dehiscence, uh, especially if you're doing a larger bone graft augmentation. Um, 
so that's that's kind of what we did. We put her in an Essex uh, appliance at, at this point uh, because we were planning to do a ridge augmentation in this site later on bone graft. And I do not prefer uh, putting any pressure directly over my bone grafted site. So we made her an Essex appliance. And that's what she uh, she was wearing. So the first step of, after two months, we decided to go back and do a ridge augmentation. The way I, <clears throat> I generally uh, approach these kind of cases with a remote incision, I try to go as uh, away as possible uh, from, uh, from my surgical site. Uh, so with the two vertical incisions, we uh, cleaned out the defect. We, as you can see, there's a ma majority is, of it is horizontal defect and a very slight vertical defect in the, in the mid crestal area. So we cleaned it out. It's a beautiful contained defect. You know, when you're looking at the predictability of regeneration as uh, I always look at the, the bone on the adjacent teeth, as you can see the bone on the adjacent teeth is nice and bulky and uh, good thickness. So uh, we, are, we can expect to build up to that area at least to give us you know um, adequate regeneration so here i use the tautogenous as well as allograft uh, i i uh, routinely mix a little bit of a cortical allograft into a cortical cancellous allograft and i uh, harvested from the nasal spine some autogenous tissue uh, using a scraper i uh, love scraper from salvin do you use safe scraper or any kind of scrapers fadi for i use safe scrapers a lot i love them they work amazing yeah. Safe Scraper is, is amazing product. Uh, it's so sharp. I mean, you could harvest as much as you want for like, especially if you're doing a quarry plates, uh, you know, you need a, a something good, sharp, you know, to harvest like CC of autogenous bone, two CCs to pack it in. But uh, this kind of case, I used actually a reusable scraper from Salvin, a uh, great product. Uh, it's called Ebner Scraper. Uh, I went right into the nasal spine. I love that one too. It works really, really well. Yeah, yeah it's good stuff. And for smaller uh, graft harvests, like this one is not a very large harvest, obviously, but it, it, it works uh, a couple of times and you can reuse it. It's a reusable scraper um, for this kind of purpose. So we have attacked the membrane. This is a, a Renovix Plus membrane, also from Salvin uh, Dental. A great um, non cross link membrane, but extremely strong and stretchy, very similar. Um, almost similar consistency like a bioguide or um, other membranes that are uh, non-cross-linked. Uh, so we secured it with uh, tacks. Um, uh, that mixture was placed. I usually tack the coronal aspect first, as you can see, and then I build uh, build it coronally with you know with the bulk of the bone graft, and then I tack apical portion, as you can see here. And then we let this heal for uh, for at least six months. Uh, these type of regenerations, um, I don't usually wait longer than six months for most of the horizontals. If I do a vertical augmentation, maybe wait a little bit longer, up to nine months in these kind of cases. Uh, when you do something, uh, Fadi, when you're using, I know you do uh, quarry plates, autogenous uh, uh, plates, you, you can re-enter these sites fairly soon, right? Like four months, three, four months? Exactly. So for 40 plates, I do four months for horizontals, but for my vertical augmentation of 40, I usually wait anywhere six months at, at least. Wow, incredible. It still blows my mind how you can gain all of the tagenous bone with, within so short, I'll be short time. I'll be posting two cases very soon with 40 plates that I just finished, and I went for re-entry, and the results just blew my mind, like with the severity of the case. So get ready for, for a couple of good two cases I'll be posting about it. Oh, that's incredible. And, you know, speaking of uh, cases, uh, we're, you know, in our course, we're obviously not just going to show you guys soft tissue, uh, root coverage things. We're going to uh, involve, you know, these kind of cases where we do augmentation of bone, soft tissue, and hopefully you can share some of these quarry, uh, quarry plate cases with us as well during the course. Nice, nice, great. So we, you know, grafted it, we let it heal, uh, six month post up. Um, the tags were actually retrieved. I, I took out the tags a little bit uh, sooner because they, they started to peek through. As you can see, there is uh, two verticals, tiny vertical incisions right in the KG area um, where the tags used to be. If you look where the tags were placed and where the tags were removed, they were sort of, let me highlight with the laser pointer. I made an incision here and I made an incision there. There's a tiny little scarring in the tissue, but I retrieved them before um, ahead of time. Um, and then because I wanted to avoid doing this large flap, which is kind of a drawback of using bone tacks is sometimes you have to retrieve tacks, making a bigger flap. So I, have, I decided not to make a big flap and uh, did a papilla sparing incision here. Um, obviously, even though the bone is, is 
excellent. In this case, the soft tissue is still deficient. So what we decided to do, I took, um, I, I did a, a like a mini a buckle roll type of flap incision design. So I borrowed some of the palatal or crestal tissue and rolled it to the buckle. And then I inserted that connective tissue um, kind of laterally to the buckle of the implant. Uh, sorry, we placed the implant at that point, obviously, sorry, I didn't mention. So we opened up a mini flap, we placed our implant into a really good regenerated bone. Then we added some autogenous tissue. And right at the same time, I, I fabricated an immediate temporary, as you can see here. Um, <laughs> this was a chair side temporary. I generally fabricate uh, temporary for, I would say, 99% of my anterior cases. Um, I know, Fadi, you, you do the same. Um, if we can't do that, we can at least do a, a custom a healing abutment. That's the kind of the bare minimum that I would do for any anterior aesthetic case. Yes, you can place a healing abutment here as well. Um, you know, if you, for whatever reason, you can't fabricate a custom healing abutment, we can, we can work with the tissue at a later time. But it's preferred if we do that sort of all at the same time because you're taking advantage of the healing uh, right away, uh, healing potential. So um, you close the vertical. We I suture the graft to the flap just with these uh, with the vertical incisions. So I secured it that way. I didn't have to do any any additional uh, sort of um, stabilization of the of the graft just with the verticals only. And let's see how we we started healing. Uh, this is three week follow up. I we starting to already see. Uh, you know the papillas are filling in, especially the distal papilla. The midline papilla is filling in. Um, and obviously the verticals are healing very favorably in, in this case. And you can look at the thickness of the tissue and bone there. It's, uh, you know, from the occlusal view, it looks like a tumor. Um, you, you know, you can argue from the facial that you can also notice it, but to me, I think it's, uh, it's, you know, very, very minimally uh, noticeable in terms of being like too bulky almost. Cause I've, I've had a comment, like, it looks too bulky. Are you, are you planning to plasty this? Well, um, I don't know. It's a good problem to have. I don't know if you would be plasting this tissue or um, <laughs> for something uh, to improve the aesthetics, basically. But for three weeks, this is actually a really nice result so far. Uh, generally, for these cases, I would always be worried about the verticals uh, not healing properly. Um, so, you know, you can sometimes see uh, the scarring almost that, that's formed and sometimes the vertical doesn't heal well. But in this case, I think it's healing actually fairly nicely. Um, and then we, we go forward four months um, and, you know, we're looking at the final final check before she goes to the restorative dentist to take final impressions. So for these kind of cases, because I um, worked on the tissue shaping so hard, I want to fabricate a custom impression coping for the general dentist to be able to take the um, an impression and, and translate that impression information to lab. So, so Dimitri, question. Yeah. Um, are you um, are you doing your custom healing custom impression coping at the same time you're fabricating your provisional or at the at four months five months later? What are, how are you doing it? That's actually a really cool question. Um, you know, if uh, the reason why I don't generally do it at the time of custom um, a tooth, basically tooth uh, temporary, is because I sometimes bring the patient and I add more composite to my restoration because. In some cases where I'm not happy with, uh, let's say a papilla or something on the mesial, and I wanna push that papilla just a little bit more into the contact, I can add some more uh, composite during. So I wait until the very end when I'm happy with the tissue. This is four month follow-up. She came and I uh, took out the temporary tooth and uh, I, I created the custom coping. And I'll go over that as well in our course of how to make these custom healing abutments, custom temporaries, as well as custom uh, impression copings uh, to be able to record it. So yeah, but a great question. I think it would be nice if you're very happy with the emergence right away to make a custom impression coping on that same visit. That yep. saves you basically patient a, a visit, but and, and you time too. So that's what I do. So for my immediate cases, what I love to do is I love to make my custom impression coping the same time because at least I know from the immediate standpoint, um, the I'm preserving the emergence as it is, you know, as far as the papilla, the soft tissue position. I do agree with you on the delayed is that a lot of times I will come back in delayed case like this one. I might consider be adding more composite just to, like I said, tweak the gingival margin or tweak the papilla height. So 
that one I tend to push later. But for my immediate cases, I've been like to doing it more. So that way the tissue doesn't collapse later on. If I want to fabricate it, let's say four or five months later, taking the impression, sometimes that soft tissue collapse will happen. Patients are uncomfortable. So I provide them the custom healing, the custom impression coping immediately, right? It's like, take it out, stick it right in, take your impression. That That's way okay. minimize That's the collapse of the tissue and, and discomfort. I like that. I like that. Actually, I'll, I'll definitely consider doing that because that will save patient an extra a little bit of time in ourselves because we're already there. Uh, if you're already there, everything's been there. The patient's numb already. An extra five minutes, do it before you close it up and just yeah. save, it, save it for your um, restorative dentist. Wow, that's that's awesome, man. Thanks for sharing this. Um, yeah, no, I agree with you. That's um, another thing. Another thing that, uh, you know, obviously for this kind of case, I think ortho would have been a nice addition to the treatment plan, but she just did not want to, um, you know, consider ortho. I think the case would look so beautiful if she, oh, if yeah. she just aligned the teeth just a little bit, a few rotations, probably with some Invisalign, but um, she she got restored actually by the restorative dentist. I should be seeing her for, for the, like a couple of month follow-up. Uh, very soon, I think this month or next month, so I'll share the final result. But that's yeah. that's basically kind of uh, taking a lot of steps. Uh, you know, these cases require a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, timing. And she was very patient. Um, and if the patient is not going to like put in a lot of effort and wait, uh, sometimes they push you to do things sooner or faster. Things may not work out as well, from my experience. Um, but yeah, you, you got to let. Just like your case, you patient let you do uh, quite a few procedures to achieve a uh, stable exactly. long-term result. Uh, it's taken me almost a year, literally almost a year from start to yeah. finish to really get to the case where it's like, we're okay, now we can proceed. So it's all about what I said. They have, to, they have to understand this is a process without rushing it, you know, as much as we like to, but we just have to respect <laughs> the body, let it heal in the right way. Yeah, no, for sure. These cases, especially aesthetic zone uh, areas, uh, you know, I she comes in for a lot of appointments and, and sometimes, you know, you tell her, we just got to wait a little bit longer. And, you know, some patients will be like, oh, my God, it's been this case took over a year uh, to complete, you know, before extraction plus two months of healing. Uh, GBR six months uh, mm -hmm. implant plus soft tissue if it's four to five or six four months. months yeah. like that. So we're talking about 13 months. 12 months of uh, tooth replacement. So, but yeah, great, um, you know, great beauty of, of being patient, I guess, sometimes ourselves is, is we can get, get that type of treatment delivered. Me so sure yeah. Do a five minute warning, because I know you two can just talk about soft tissue grafting and film work tomorrow. So <laughs> <laughs> that's right. In the Zoom chat, so if you guys are here, I've shared with you how to sign up for their awesome course. I'll be there adding zero value except jokes, but they will be there teaching us. Uh, you get to hang out in Philly. I put that in the chat, but also you can still continue for five more minutes, Dimitri, but if anyone has any questions, please drop it in the Q&A um, so I can get back to my dadding so hard on a Sunday, but you got five minute wrap up, Dimitri. Yeah, we're um, we're pretty much done with our cases. Uh, if you guys you know want to find us or some info, just uh, look our um, Instagram account. This is a Perio Amigos, or just go to our website, perioamigos.com. It talks a lot about our, um, you know, including of our course and what we're planning to do, uh, you know, in the course, as well as what we do in our, uh, you know, practices. And, and check out our personal Instagram accounts as well. Uh, we we spent a lot of time on, you know, putting these great cases. You know, it takes a lot of effort to document these kind of cases because uh, out of these 30 pictures that you saw, we probably took 300 just to get those 30 to look good. <laughs> so yeah, let us know what you can, what you guys would like, um, if you have questions and obviously I hope to see you all at the course. So uh, we're planning a, a lot of fun stuff for you. And I'm excited just to hang out with Paul um, and Fadi in person. Uh, Cause that's- fun. Someone asked, do you have more Zoom cases? I put in the chat, you guys were very kind to do amazing, um, C course a few months ago, so you can rent it for free for 48 hours. So instead of Netflix, you can watch this. Although I'm going to add some value here. We watched the Millers versus the Machine on Netflix. Great show for your kids. If you have something to watch tonight, Millers versus the Machine, brand new on Netflix for kids ages three to 10. But if you would like to watch the Peril Amigos instead of Netflix, I put in the chat uh, how you can rent that course. So uh, 
you know also all, yeah we can we can certainly consider doing more cases uh you know it's super easy for us to do a quick chat about one case each um uh, we can throw a few more down in the next uh two months until the course i think if Fadi, i'm sure Fadi would be down for it if paul is okay with it yeah we can, do, yeah, we can uh, make more plans like this a lot of fun we'll get this edited for our youtube channel thanks so much guys people watching in i hope you guys consider coming to see us i already have Tarek from Nachos is coming. I know you guys are great people. It's a great excuse to get out, see dentists, learn something, bring stuff back to your practice. So thanks so much, guys. Thank you. Alrighty, thanks, guys. Have a great Sunday, everyone. Have a Sunday, everyone. Enjoy the weekend. Bye-bye.